South Africans, welcome to our live feed here in Alexander, Johannesburg. We're commemorating Youth Day. Today promises to be an exciting day. My name is Karavo Lerato Khakau. Kito Adi, I'm Africa. I'm going to be a little bit of 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 a So here with me, I have our interim federal uh, DA youth leader, Nicholas Nyati. Nicholas, we are in Alexandra. But first of all, why are we commemorating Youth Day? Uh, youth Day is an important part of our history. It is a day where young people defined their struggle and decided to stand up and fight for that struggle. So today we are here to re-inspire ourselves as a young generation to say, what is our struggle and how do we unite in addressing that struggle? So uh, we, we understand that genuinely we're standing right now commemorating Youth Day because of the struggle of young people of 76. But why is Alexandra such an important setting for us to be in right now? Alexandra is one of the townships that said because there is an uprising where young people are standing up against Bantu education, a gentleman by the name of Japi Vilangulo said, not in my name. And it's interesting because Yapi Vilangulo was not a student at the time, but he was a young person who understood that it is country duty before my own selfish gains. And he stood up and said, I will go out there and support the struggle because it affects each and every one of us. Currently, as a country, we have youth unemployment that affects any all young people it might not affect me personally but it needs your Japi Villagulus to stand up and say not in my name and not in my country whilst I'm still alive. Yeah. So Nicholas young people have been complaining to say all political parties do is promise 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 you have just been elected as our new interim federal leader what can young South Africans in this country expect from your tenure? Young people must expect practical solutions. I do not believe in poetry. I believe in getting things done. And that's what attracted me to the DA in the first place. Political organizations are not the same. When you look at the DA run Western Cape or run Western Cape, we have the lowest unemployment rate. You can never say we are the same. When you look at the work that Mpopalata has done in the city of Johannesburg, you cannot say we are all the same. So the DA youth will be at the forefront of calling for practical solutions. The first one being the scrapping of NYTA. Great stuff. We, you've heard it from our interim leader. We have exciting speeches coming up from himself, from our, our federal leader, John Stian Hazen. Let's keep the timelines blue. Hashtag Youth Day. And yeah, we have also exciting performances. Stay tuned. He's young. He's from Mfuleni local municipality. He's a chief whip of Mfuleni local municipality. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a chief provincial chairperson of youth. Welcome to the stage. The one and only, the young person from Val, Duncan Ntabu! Thank you very much. Uh, young people, it's such an honor to be here today. 
uh, to be with you in the commemoration of our fallen heroes. I think each and every one of us, when we are here today, the message is clear. We understand what is it that had to take place for us to be where we are. Yes, we understand that things are not going accordingly, but at least we understand where we are. With that being said, I would like to welcome the national leadership uh, led by John Steinhazen, who will be joining us today. I would like to welcome uh, DA Youth National Leadership led by Nicolas Nyati. And we are saying that indeed we can see the progress of young people in Gauteng. Amanda! Uh, with that being said, young people, let's take this moment to welcome the national chairperson of DA Youth in the entire country. His name is Ndipiwe Olai. Colleagues, I'd like to open the proceedings of today by welcoming you all. I want to first and foremost welcome the federal leader of DA Youth, Nicholas Nyati. I'd also like to welcome the federal leader of the Democratic Alliance, Uton Stenhazen. I'd want to welcome also U Tate, Duncan Tembi, the provincial chairperson of the Gauteng, and all the leadership that is here present, all protocol observed. Leaders, we are here today to commemorate the youth of 1976 and their generational mission which was against Bantu education and an, and, and an unjust government. Their generational mission which they succeeded to ensure that they won, but also to commemorate the youth of 2022 which stands firmly on the, so on the shoulders of our parents, the youth of 76. We have our own generational mission as young people. We have a generational mission that we need to ensure we are no longer suffocated by a lost organization, which is called the ANC. We have to ensure that we fight unemployment, cadre deployment, corruption, because as na Mali, EP Mali, we are unemployed, Ubinje generally. But that is our generational mission, and we cannot fail, comrades. Uh, I would like to please have a moment of silence in honor of the youth of 76, but also in honor of our fallen young people of 2022, who relentlessly and robustly advocated for the advancement of young people everywhere. Thank you very much. I would like all of us to keep your heads off <laughs> as we stand to attention for the national anthem. Thank you very much. Oh! 
Mata Yaruna Mata Yaruna Mata Eh uh, C'est lui qui me dit C'est lui Right You are well Hulendwe <laughs> Kulendwe <laughs> With that being said, my job is simple. Uh, at this moment, I would like to introduce the person who is in charge of this area. Yeah? If, if it was not for him, he would not be here. <laughs> He's the one that gives commands. Is the one that gives us the clear direction as how then where we are going. Yeah, yeah. He's the caucus leader in Houghton Provincial Legislature. He's the former mayor of Twani. He's one of the he's still here, one of the good South Africans that we have ah, in South yeah. Africa. He goes by the name of Solitepisom Simanga. Amanda! <laughs> South Africa, halala. halala, halala, the young people of the Democratic Alliance, halala. halala. Democrats, Kelvimeri, sir, good morning. I don't want to waste time. There's three things that I want to say to you. As young people, you are charged with making sure that tomorrow the generation that comes after you will inherit a better South Africa. That's what the youth of 1976 had in mind when they decided that they are going to go on the streets and they're going to march. That is what the young person that we are, that was buried here, that we are coming to lay the wreath here, said that the child that is coming after me is not going to live the same kind of life that I lived. The young generation of 1976 stood up and said, I don't fight a language, I am fighting equality. They were not, you see, the people have got it wrong. They were not fighting Africans. They were fighting the ability to learn in their own mother tongue. They were fighting to say, if Africans can be a language that a child can go from preschool up to a professor level, why can't I, as a black child, be able to go to school and learn in Zulu from crash up to a professor level? Amen. They were saying, why as a young person, not a horror to you to take us a soul to, who to a bunya nimbaka, who to a laki who deal, if a lesson of a little doctrine, Kalamuji, and Nakira Tanker Kilamuji Abuhai. That's what they were fighting for. 
The thieves will come back and say, No, the gallant youth of Murogoro, hey, 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 called him Nonsense. The young people were fighting for equality. They were fighting to say, I want the same right as the child that is living somewhere in a much more progressive, in a much more prosperous area. The young people of Alexander were saying, I want the same kind of right that is, that is enjoyed by somebody who's sitting across the road there in Santé. They were not fighting black white. They were not fighting that. So my hold, how about you say the chalet? When you say to them, you have stolen money, you went and, and built 120 million rent stadium in Mamelodi. Now you want to spend more millions to break that same stadium. And then when we, are, when we raise this issue with you, you then tell us about, about apartheid. As if apartheid, Kiona Hill Stadium was 120 million. Young people are now languishing in the street, living in poverty. They're becoming more and more unemployed by the day. We are losing jobs and in Gauteng, more and more young people are unemployed and are becoming unemployable because of two things. One, because of Renale Mahod in government, Babasa Nanle Planya or Rajwang Kupi. But two, because of South Africa Haina, an idea of how do we turn the economy around, how do we invest in education so that education can be the driver of the economy. But you're not here to listen to me. I'm here to deliver just a simple message and to welcome the leader to the province of Gauteng, the leaders, uh, the national youth leader and the national leader and uh, the leadership of the youth in general and the provincial chairperson of the youth protocol observed. I want to say to you young people, as the chairperson was saying, don't ever, don't ever uskebe ungasoze wapandina the mission of ensuring that one day those that are coming behind you are inheriting a better place than the one that you have got. And it starts with you standing up and saying, I want to know what is the way forward. Stop telling me about everything that happened in the past. Tell me about how you're taking me from where I am going forward. Amanka! Amanka! We will not fail the young people of this province. We will not fail the young people of South Africa. Because if we fail the young people of South Africa, we are dooming the future of South Africa to the doldrums of history. That will be nothing that we can be proud of. Amanka! Amanka! Wait! Wait! Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the So I'm allowing you an opportunity to welcome someone who will make you dance. Over to you, Ndati. 150. 150. King! 150. King! 150. King! 150. King! Yeah. All right. I'm just going to sing for you. You just listen. Yeah. 
Thing I just gonna do, guys. I'm huge as well, Nami. I've heard a lot of guys at the back there saying that they are artists, by Yatu, but they have never been uh, supported. I have a studio myself. I'm a producer as well. I'll need those artists to go there, submit their numbers. And the other thing, the other thing that I'll do, one more thing that I'll do, the biggest thing. You guys wanna be on the TV acting. You got all talent. I want you to go there and submit. Oh, I don't, let's do this. I have a page. It's 150K Facebook. It's very simple. 150K, there's my numbers there. Then you text me. I will make sure that you've been cast. You've been at the TV. You're making your money by yourself. Thank you very much today. I love you all.
Uh, young people, at this point, we are going to listen to our national leader. He goes by the name of Nicholas Nyat. He's the one that is in charge of all young people of DA youth in the country. He comes from PE. He's a councillor there. In all the spaces that you find Nicholas, you'll find young people being advocated for. With that being said, let's give Nicholas a howting welcome. Hoi hoi! Amanza! Amanza! Gawe tu! Amanza! Gawe tu! Amanza! Viva TA Youth! TA Youth! Viva! Viva! Viva TA Youth! TA Youth! Viva! Viva! Amanza! Today, we are commemorating 46 years after the youth of 1976 decided to define their struggle, identify their biggest challenge, unite in that challenge, and face it head on. Today, we are commemorating that day, a very important day in our history. As we gather here today, young people have nothing to celebrate. 46 years after, young people have nothing to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Just last week, I was reading a story about a young man from the Northern Cape by the name of Utabang. Utabang committed suicide live on TikTok. Before he killed himself, Tabang said, as a young man, a 26-year-old, I feel as if I have failed my mother and my little sister because I'm unable to provide for them. I'm unable to get a job. 46 years later, we have a young person who committed suicide because they do not have access to an opportunity. As I stand here today, I want to dare I want to dare and say that the ANC government killed Utabang. The ANC government, led by President Cyril Palapala Ramaphosa, killed Utabang. This ANC government is not happy with stealing taxpayers' money. This ANC government is not happy with promoting unlawlessness that they have decided to now kill us. This government is killing us. When a young person does not have a job, they do not have dignity. Young graduates are stripped of their dignity because they are forced to stand in traffic lights. They are forced to stand in traffic intersections with their qualifications and say, I am looking for a job. Our sisters can't afford to buy sanitary towels. 46 years later. They cannot afford to buy these sanitary towels because prices are skyrocketing. In many communities, young people are forced to exchange sex for jobs. Where is their dignity? How many tabans are out there? How many young people have committed suicide because they have given up on jobs and opportunities? How many? Without a job, a young person feels as if they have nothing. How would you feel if you did not have dignity? This Youth Day, we need to wage a war. We must wage a strong fight against the uncaring ANC government. We need to put a strong fight and help restore the dignity of young people. All young South Africans, we must restore their dignity. On Monday, this week has been very difficult for me. On Monday, I lost a brother, a friend, by the name of Ulu Tochet Sogotel. He was an activist of this party. Ulu Uto, like many other South Africans, fought fearlessly and tirelessly each and every day of his short-lived life. 
to ensure that young people can have dignity. Uluto passed away just before he was about to be sworn in as a councillor because he understood the struggle that young people were facing. He used each and every opportunity that he had to address the plight of young South Africans. Over the last few months, we have seen young people like you. We have seen Duncan, we have seen Dickon, we have seen Utando, we have seen young people at the forefront. Just last year, where young people stood up and said, no more, enough is enough. Where young people went and mended tables, info tables, to ensure that we can have mayors. Where young people, without looking to benefit anything personally, said, we will ensure that Mpopa Lata is a mayor in the city of Johannesburg. Ooh. Today, Usoli is the de facto premier because we are governing Utswane, we are governing Ekuruleni, we are governing the city of Johannesburg because of you, the young people. You were at the forefront. Young people took a stand and said, no more, we will, su will we support the job crisis. We will vote for jobs and not to be unemployed. Young people stood up in 2021 and said, no more. We will vote for a government that does not provide safety in our communities. We will no longer vote for crime. Young people rejected poor service delivery. And for that, I must thank you. I must thank you with the caution that Asika Kali and Asika Kedi. We all need to keep firing the spirit of Hector Peterson. We need to fire up the spirit of Yapi Vilangulu. And that's why we are here today. A spirit that says, I am going to put South Africa first. A spirit that says, I will not rest until my brother and sister are liberated. A spirit that says, I might have a job, but I will not rest until all of us can proudly say that we have a job. Almost one in every two young people in the labor force doesn't have a job. Millions of South Africans are locked out of opportunities, whilst the ANC fat cats continue to live at large. See this team, Asabandabach. Why must Utabang kill himself because he could not get an opportunity to have a job? Whilst the ministers, sitting ministers, can blow up 1.4 billion rands in hotels, parties, and holidays during the lockdown. Yet there are people like Tabang. Today we are here to say that as this generation, the generation of Tanke Ntembu, the generation of Ndipiwa Olai, the generation of the late Luto Sogutela, we are here to say today, we have identified our struggle. This is a struggle that we are going to fight for. And if needs be, this is a struggle that we are prepared for this unjust government to kill us for. Yeah. Our biggest struggle as a generation is unemployment. It is unfortunate that not all of us have couches that with millions of American dollars. <laughs> we need jobs to buy simple things such as bread and milk. We need jobs to keep up with the rising cost of living. We need jobs to secure our future and that of the next generation. Young people are sick and tired. You've proven it. Young people are sick and tired of empty promises. Young people are sick and tired of the broken record that is Ramaphosa. Young people are sick and tired of the empty rhetoric that we are told year in and year out. To foster job creation, we need to create opportunities. From a national government perspective, we must be able to establish work, youth work opportunity centers and innovation hubs. This will assist young entrepreneurs. People like Wu King 150 will be assisted to those centers. We need to implement tax incentives for small businesses to encourage them to invest and therefore create jobs. To achieve this, our demand is backed by simple and implementable steps. 
by giving them the blueprint on how to do it. National government, number one, must immediately scrap NYDA. NYDA is a 500 million rand milking cow, a slush fund of the ANC. For half a billion rand, the NYDA employs ANC caters in high paying jobs. Let me tell you something. The people who sit on that board get paid 500,000 in annum just to attend 10 meetings. Yet there are people who are like Tabang. NYDA does not create any real jobs for ordinary South Africans like me and you. It does not create any opportunities for the unemployed young South Africans. The NYTA does nothing for young people in rural communities. It does nothing for them. It does nothing for unskilled young people. Its primary mandate is to develop and train those people so that they can be able to compete for opportunities. The only thing it does, they sip champagne and post on Instagram. We must be able to wait a fight, a fight that will be led in Parliament. And I'm saying it proudly because the caucus leader is here of Parliament, that the DA must be at the forefront of saying NYDA must be scrapped because it is a 500 million rand cash wow. Wow. We are saying we must scrap the race-based job-killing legislation that discourages investors. Legislation like BEE or NHI. We must be able to cut the red tape to allow for the formalization of informal businesses and to make it easier to do business. Let's make life better for small-scale farmers. And those who are setting up startups in urban areas. Let's end cater deployment. It is a disease. It's worse than corona. Let's end cater deployment which reserves jobs in the public sector only for those who are carrying card members of the ANC and excludes the young, capable, skilled young individuals like yourselves. We must privatize failed state-owned enterprises and expand the role of the private sector in the economy, thereby empowering young people to set up new businesses and directly create jobs. I'm proud to stand here today. I'm proud to stand here. Because I can answer the question when people say, but what have you done as the DA? I can answer the question because as the DA, we are the party that gets things done. In the DA run Western Cape, the DA run Western Cape does not have a board of high paid political appointments to create new jobs. We just get our hands dirty and our feet on the ground and create those jobs for young people. Yeah. That's why we have the lowest unemployment rate in South Africa. Yeah. In the Eastern Cape, we do not practice cater deployment, which means that talented and skilled graduates have the opportunity to enter the public service. The DA run Western Cape still has the lowest unemployment rate in the country and creates the most jobs. The province's red tape reduction team, reduction unit, has been in the forerunner in the country when it comes to making it easier for small business owners to do business. And that is what we need. Addressing the youth unemployment crisis requires bold leadership. It requires all of us. It requires a type of leadership that is honest and centered in South Africans. And NYDA is not that. The current poverty cabinet led by Mr. Palapala is not that. On this youth day, John, on this youth day, we are making a commitment. On this youth day, we are making a commitment as the DA youth that will be at the forefront in speaking to our councils, in speaking with our legislatures, and in speaking to parliament to go and present motions and bills that directly speak to addressing youth unemployment. Yeah, yeah. 
Fighting unemployment is a struggle that affects all of us, all young people from all walks of life. To the young person who has given up on a life with dignity, as the DA youth who are saying that we are here. To the young person who feels like Utaban, that there is no option or no solution, we are saying that we are here. To John Steinhazen and Soli Msimang, who continue to fight the good fight in our legislatures. And sometimes they feel as if it's not worth it. We are saying we support you and that we are here. When they seek to divide us, we will be there to unite. Because as the DA youth, we are here. When they tell us about the past, we will tell them about the future of South Africa that we want to build. When generations to come say when South Africa was facing a crisis, where was the DA youth? will be able to say we were there yes. because as the DA youth, we are here. Yes. Yeah. Yes, when the youth works, South Africa works. Yes. South Africa is not going to work if me and you do not take up this fight. Yes. Viva! Viva! 
Pambili, the youth of the DA, Pambili. Forward to true liberation in 2024. Forward. You know, I love Youth Day. And I love being here, Solly, in your province. And I love being with our Democrats. And I love being with our youth leader, Nicholas Inyati. And wasn't that a great speech? But you know what my favorite part about Youth Day? It's always the performers. And we had 150 King here today, and he was brilliant. But I also love musicians. I also love 50 Cent. But we got a new musician. He's in Parliament now. He's called 4 Million Cyril. Because he's got the dollars shoved under his, his couch at home. But he's not singing at the moment. He's keeping very quiet. We're still waiting for the album called Truth to come out. But it's been very, very quiet and very silent. And we want to tell the president today that as young people in South Africa, we're not going to stop answer, asking the questions. Where did you get the money? Who gave you the money? Why did you not report it to the police? Why did you send your VIP protection unit over the border that we all pay for? Our young women are not safe on the streets of South Africa with GBV while we spend 8 billion rand on VIP protection services. Nonsense. Our women are not even safe when they go to the post office, but we spend 8 billion rand on VIP protection services. But today we are here in this wonderful place of Alexandria, and I'm very, very glad to be here. Because today, 46 years ago, hundreds of young South Africans in Soweto paid the ultimate price at the hands of the apartheid police when they stood up for freedom. The official death toll that was given on the day was 174, but many estimated to be much higher than that. But what many people forget is that the killings did not end in Soweto as news of the uprising spread to other communities. So too did the brutal police response. And it was right here in Alex that one of the bloodiest scenes in 1976 took place. And it's hard to think about that as we sit here on what is a normal day in South Africa. Children playing soccer on the field people going about their daily life, distant sounds of dogs barking and children playing with each other. But on the 18th of June, two days after the death of Hector Peterson and scores of others in Soweto, 34 young South Africans lost their lives right here in Alex as police fired live ammunition at these young people. And the first to be shot and killed was a 23-year-old Yapi Vilankulu, whose grave lies beside us today. Outraged by what had taken place two days before, and not content to sit by and watch his generation being mowed down by police officers, Yapi said goodbye to his family, and then he went to go and mobilize young people and protesters in solidarity with the Soweto youth. That was the last time that Yapi's family saw him alive. He was shot seven times and he died carrying a rubbish bin lid that he had tried to use as a shield. Today we remember Yapi and Hector and hundreds of other South Africans who gave their lives in the struggle against injustice and oppression and it started as a protest against Afrikaans and for the mother tongue instruction but what Yapi and Hector and all of those young people in that generation were fighting for was something much bigger they recognized a massive injustice that had settled in in our society and they knew that it was up to them that the burden and duty had fallen to them, that their generation 
was going to have to resist this injustice and to demand the change that South Africa needed. They knew that waiting for other people could mean waiting too long. Their death those days in June, 46 years ago, still reverberate through history today. Their sacrifice paved the way for the freedoms our country and our people must never be prepared to give up. We owe it to them, to that generation, to ensure that their sacrifice and their struggle actually mean something for us and for generations to come. And Youth Day is a particular reminder that our freedom came at an incredibly high cost and we cannot ever take it for granted. It also has to be a reminder to our generation that freedom has to be won over and over again in successive generations. So, if you see injustice, if you think you and your freedom and your future is being threatened, then you cannot wait for other people to do something about it. You, the South African youth, this generation of young people, have the most to lose, but also the most to gain. And you must do something about it. Now, I don't need to tell you that the freedom fought for in 1976 and finally won in 1994 has not translated into economic freedom and particularly not for our generation of young South Africans. Never before has the future looked so bleak for young South Africans. Never before has the prospect of finding a job, meaningful work, or leaving school with a decent education been further away. Why do millions of South Africans, most of them young, find themselves locked out of opportunity and, the, and our economy, while the youth in other countries don't experience the same? What have our young people done to the ANC that they hate them so much? What have our young people done to the ANC that they victimize and persecute them in the way that they are persecuted in this country? Why can our economy not grow and create work? Why can our schools not keep up with the education levels in other countries? Why do we have some of the worst education outcomes here in South Africa and the worst youth unemployment crisis in the world? The highest youth unemployment rate in the world. That's not a record we can sit back and say we're proud of. We've got to do something about it. And we've got to ask these questions. And we've got to keep doing it, even if the answers make us uncomfortable. Even if the answers implicate the very party that bought freedom for many, many South Africans. And the irony is that Youth Day is going to be celebrated today across the length and breadth of South Africa. And all over, in cities and towns and little villages and community halls, ANC politicians will stand before crowds of people just like you today and they will talk about investing in the youth they will talk about opening opportunities for the youth yeah, yeah. but the truth is democrats they have lost the right to do so because they the anc those politicians have directly caused through their destructive policies their outdated ideology and their greed every single bit of misery that our young people are facing in South Africa today. Now, the moment young South Africans realize, and this is the job of our party and our young people and the DA youth and DASA, the moment young South Africans realize what all these programs and policies and talk shops disguised as redress and transformation have actually done, they will turn their back on them for good. And that's the day that our country is going to take that massive step forward into the future. And there's a very good reason why the ANC can't let go of BEE. And it's got nothing to do with redress and it's got nothing to do with justice. 
It's got nothing to do with uplifting poor South Africans and it's got nothing to do with empowering young people. They hang on to it because it's made a very small group of people very wealthy and left 35 million people outside trapped in poverty. How many people here have got 400 rand in their couch? Never mind four million dollars. If you've got four million dollars in your house in your couch, I'd like to speak to you afterwards, please. It's time for you to make a donation to the DA. And so they continue to rob you. They continue to take your opportunities and stuff them into their own couches and into their own families and into their own networks. And the moment that South Africans, young people, realize that none of these things that the, it says on the box outside of the ANC, none of those things are true. And they are just going to visit more injustice, more suffering, and more pain on our young people. In the parliamentary debates that took place yesterday in Parliament, they also tried to put a pensioner in as the Inspector General of Intelligence, a 71-year-old, but we were able to stop that from happening. One of the ANC speakers said, if we give this country to the youth, they will sell it for 50 cents. And when I look across those benches in Parliament yesterday, and I see what looks like a Sasser pay point on pension day, <laughs> you can't say that you're serious about young people. But look at the parliamentary benches of the DA that are full of young people. People like Loyolo Mpiti, people like Seviwe Guarube, people like Emma Powell, people like Zakele Mbele, Bax Nodada. Look at our youth leader, Nicholas Nyati. He's not some 42-year-old Oros. He's here, he's young. He's part of the young generation. He's getting out there and he's making things happen. So if you want to see how badly government is failing young people in South Africa, you need only look at how many young people are unemployed. But also, how many of them have given up looking for work? How many of our friends and our families and our colleagues and our brothers and sisters are sitting at home saying, Ayi koi mali, ayi koi basfe, I can't go even look for work. I've given up. There's no jobs out there for me. And you see, those people are called discouraged job seekers. But I've got a message of hope for them today. I've got something that's going to get them up off the couch and to give them hope that there is a better future that waits for them and that it is going to be up to them as this generation to get out there and bring the change that our country needs yes. so desperately. Yes. And... That ray of hope originates in the Western Cape. And the reason it's got a lower unemployment rate, and the reason why unemployed people there continue looking for work, is because it does things differently there. You see, we don't believe in judging our policies on how good they sound. We judge our policies and our interventions on their outcomes. And that's why we have the lowest unemployment rate in the Western Cape. We've got the highest number of young people in work. It's why we've got learnerships and schools that are, are preparing young people for the future. It's why we've got aftercare so children don't fall into gangsterism and drugs. It's the only province in the country that's got a school evaluator system to assess where the quality teaching is taking place. It leads away when it comes to collaboration schools. And it is also, by some distance, the lowest school dropout rate. We keep children in school so that they finish it, so they can go out there with opportunity. So I want you to all forget about all the platitudes you're going to hear today, about the promises that now there's going to be a presidential commission on youth. Now there's going to be a task team to look at youth unemployment. Now there's going to be a workshop to discuss youth unemployment. We don't need that. We don't need all those things. We need this government to get off its backside and start doing something for the young people of this country. <clears throat> and I was told yesterday in Parliament by another pensioner, the Deputy Speaker, that I'm not allowed to use the word chut full. But I can tell you that young people in this country are chut full. 
Hey, Gatvol, are you Gatvol? I'm Gatvol. I'm Gatvol of this government. I'm Gatvol of this government that's turned its back on young people, that doesn't care anymore about the future of young people, and does nothing for the cause of young people. And the only way we're going to do it is by voting that rotten group of pensioners out and bringing a new party into government. And that's our marching orders. Our young people put on the blue uniform. We're going to be the blue army. And we're going to go out there. And we're going to get votes. And we're going to convince people. And we're going to sweep this government out of power in 2024. And we're going to get things done at a national level. Yapi Velankulu, Hector Peterson, if their names must mean something, then let's honor their names by doing something for our generation, for this generation. And if you realize you've been taken for a ride, if you're a young person sitting at home who's had enough of unemployment, who's tired of watching your parents coming home in the evenings, struggling to make ends meet, if you are a young parent struggling to put food on the table for your family, who's going to look into the eyes of your hungry children every night, do not lose hope. Because thanks to the sacrifices made 46 years ago, your actions don't need to be violent. They don't need to be dangerous. You don't have to protest or destroy to get your message across. Because today, the young people of South Africa, unlike Yapi Villankulo and unlike Hector Peterson, have a far more powerful weapon in their hands. And that weapon is your vote. Yes. That weapon is your vote. And there's no bullet from the police and there's no suppression from a riot unit that can beat and trump the power of your vote. Yes. Young people of South Africa, it's not too late to secure a future fighting for. But this generation of young South Africans must now stand up and must vote for it. Yes. So let's take this message to every corner of Alex, to every corner of Soweto, to every corner of South Africa, and tell the young people it's time to stand up. Be proud of being a young person. Don't feel bad that you are a young person. Feel proud and know that you have the power to bring the change and let's get this government out of power and let's get a new, young, energetic forward-looking, progressive government in place, because that's when young people in this country are going to prosper. Amadla! Amadla! Viva DA Viva! Viva! From here, the direction is to go meet the family of there you have it, Democrats. We had beautiful speeches by our interim federal day leader and our federal leader, John Steinhazen. What is clear is that the lack of job opportunities for young people is nothing, is not something that we are not going to keep quiet about for long. We are at the forefront for fighting and standing on the shoulders of our fallen stores to ensure that freedom is indeed something we can be proud of so that one day when we celebrate June 16, we actually have something tangible to celebrate. So thank you for tuning in we have a lot of beautiful upcoming productions for you we have uh, a documentary coming in on state capture and cater deployment stay tuned for that remember to keep the timelines blue hashtag june 16 i'm signing out to get to idea of africa we say adios muchachos Cater deployment is at the root of corruption and state capture in this country. It has institutionalized criminal elements. It's become one big criminal syndicate and racket.
and protection operation. It is a racketeering and organized crime operation. It is a recipe for disaster. It is almost putting the fox in charge of the chicken house. The NC is the biggest beneficiary of KDA deployment corruption. How was it possible for these criminals to be appointed to positions of such power in the first place? It's one of the biggest criminal stitch-ups uh, in the history of South Africa. It's impossible for anybody in the ANC to say they didn't know this was happening. They knew what was going on, and they chose to do nothing about it.